Hey T heads, this is Don from Mayleaf. In this video, I am going to be diving into one of China's most famous teas and a tea which we have not stocked for many years. That is Huangshan Maofeng, aka Yellow Mountain Fur Peak. We've just shortened it down to Fur Peak. Here it is. We're going to dive straight into the scope of this tea. I'm going to give you the information about it, and then I'm going to be talking about. Well, I'm going to try to give you everything that I know about the theory around this tea. And once we come to tasting it, I'm going to explain to you the reason why we haven't stocked it for several years, and what you should be looking out for with this and other similar kinds of green tea. So let's quickly scope this tea. Season. This tea was picked on the 15th of April 2020, so early spring. But note, it is after the Qingming Festival. We'll talk about that later. The cultivar on this is the. Indigenous heirloom Huangshan variety, which is then propagated out. So it's broadly called the Huangshan Chunti Zhong variety. The origin of this is from Huangshan, which is in Anhui Province in China. This area used to be called Huizhou. Huizhou、um, was the old name for it, and it was only in the 80s that it got changed to Huangshan. Huangshan means Yellow Mountain, and in this area, the very beautiful, the incredibly beautiful. In fact, one of the most beautiful. Places I've ever visited on Earth, the Yellow Mountains is there. Picking and processing. This is a bud and one leaf, or a bud and two leaves. So very delicate pickings. We'll talk further about the significance of the pickings in a little bit. And the processing. This is stir fried by hand. So this is hand uh, uh, stir fried. So the shaching process over a wok, and then it's finished in. Uh, bake, baking drawers. So you have this、uh, this set of drawers that's heated by like、uh, charcoal ash, and that heating process bakes the tea dry. So this is officially a baked green tea, even though it does go through the initial shaching process over a wok, which is stir fried. There are different ways of making the,、uh, the of of achieving the shaching process. So we'll talk about that. As well, and finally, elevation on this is 800 meters, which is significantly higher than most green tea production in China and in Japan. When you compare it, for example, with Longjing, the elevation on Longjing on average is around 100 to 200 meters. So. Much higher up, Huangshan Mountain is definitely higher elevation, and that's an important factor to consider when selecting this tea. So we're going to now dive into that scope information. I'm going to give you more information about what you need to look for, and the reason for that is. Because Huangshan Maofeng is one of those ubiquitous teas, you see it around a lot, and in my opinion, the vast majority are not worth the price tag. And we're going to be talking about the sort of common flaws that I experience with Huangshan Maofeng when we do our tasting. But first of all, what is Maofeng? You will see the word Maofeng in a lot of places. In fact, it's one of those terms that's used. Oftentimes, for sort of commodity tea or bulk green tea, sort of like that med low to medium range quality green tea, Maofeng sort of sounds Chinese, and a lot of companies use green tea Maofeng as their sort of way of describing tea. What does it actually mean? Well, it's a kind of confusing one for me because Maofeng is、uh, Maofeng translates to fur Mao and peak Feng, so that's why it's called Fur Peak Maofeng. And oftentimes people talk about it relating to this long, straight shape. But then, if you look at, for example, Chiman Maofeng, which is a black tea, that Maofeng is naturally slightly curly. It's a little bit more twisted, so it doesn't necessarily have the same shape. And I've tried to figure out what Maofeng actually means. It certainly relates to shape, but I think it mostly relates to teas which are. Unshaped. In other words, it doesn't go through a process of shaping the leaves. So with longjing, it goes through a flattening process. You'll have the ball rolling process for for、um, oolongs and for、uh, gunpowder green teas, pearl teas in general. Whereas Maofeng, I believe, from going to visit producers producing Maofeng, it seems to me that it doesn't go through a shaping process. It's sort of allowed to sort of dry naturally and not. Be、uh, shaped before the drying process. So that's my interpretation of Maofeng. 
Um, you feel free to add any comments in the section below if you would like. Huangshan Maofeng clearly means Maofeng made from tea picked around Huangshan, which is the Yellow Mountains, a stunning, stunning area, as I said. So if you see Maofeng, it doesn't mean it's Huangshan Maofeng. It doesn't mean it comes from that particular area. So, you know, Maofeng just is a sort of descriptor for whole leaf unshaped tea. Right, right. Now let's go through a bit more of the intricacies here. So the season on this tea, um, one of the common um, misconceptions with all green teas from China is that early picked means better. And with Maofeng, in my opinion, that is not the case. Uh, remember, it's higher elevation, and that means that you don't really apply the same calendar as you would with for example, Longjing or Dragon Well. So those famous teas from lower elevation, you're looking for pre-Qingming festivals, so before the 4th of April being sort of your, your top level tea in terms of season. And of course, it's worth saying always that ultimately top tea relates to your taste. So you might like tea which is picked later on, even with Longjing. But Overall, the general consensus is pre Qingming for those lower elevation teas. But because this is higher elevation, you do not want tea picked pre Qingming, in my opinion. It's too early. And uh, a lot of the sort of sellers and producers get sucked into this race of like, we need to bring it to market quickly because the earlier spring green teas command a higher price, so they pick it earlier, which means that it has not developed sufficient enough flavor. And the biggest flaw, in my opinion, with these expensive, higher quality Huangshan Maofengs is they're lacking depth of flavor and body. And a lot of that is because of the fact that they're picking it too early for the altitude or the elevation, and they're picking usually a bud and a very, very small leaf, um, and they're not allowing the buds and the leaves to just extend a little bit further. And you'll see these leaves once they're brewed up, but you know, you'll see that it is delicate, but you definitely don't want it to be just, in my opinion, again, all opinions, I find that the Huangshan Maofangs that are very much simply buds and very few small leaves do not have the right uh, level of depth. So season, you're looking for mid-April. This is 15th of April, it's around the right time. 15th to 20th of April is usually spot on. It depends on the weather fluctuations, of course. Now let's move on to cultivar. This is from, as I said, the Chun Ti Jong variety, so the heirloom variety, which first grew with seeds, but then became propagated. Um, there are cultivars, again, which are being produced to sprout earlier and therefore trying to bring it to the market earlier. So watch out, again, for early Huangshan Maofeng because it may mean that they're using those earlier sprouting cultivars. I always think that the heirloom cultivars are best. Um, and these tea trees are around, or these bushes are around 35 years old. So they're nice aged uh, for green tea, especially aged green uh, tea bushes. So 35 years old is, you know, a nice, a nice decent age. 35 to 40 years old is a sort of good age range for green teas. The origin, this has to come from that area around Huangshan. There are many, many hundreds of villages around Huangshan uh, area. Um, and as long as it comes from one of those villages, Fuxi is a very famous one, for example, then you should be okay. Picking and processing. So this is technically a baked green tea. So they may be, uh, the Sha Qing process or kill green process may take place in a wok to start off with, but in this case, the tea is finished via baking. So it's baked in drawers, as I said. So you have a stack of drawers, um, the, the fire or the, the ash is at the bottom, and so that's bringing heat up. And so they move the drawers around, so there's different levels of heat, and they dry the tea. So there's a, a baking phase. And you can also bake it over charcoal as well. But the stir-fry process of this can be done in a few ways. The two ways that I think are acceptable is hand done over woks, which is what has happened in this one, which is great. And in my opinion, probably the best, but 
those spinning drums that you see with uh, oolong teas, which is sort of heated spinning drums, and they could be electrically heated, but often in this area, it's also wood fire heated. Those drums can do a very good job as well, as long as they're checked regularly by the tea master. So smelling, looking, taking leaves out, etc., etc. That's fine in my opinion. What you don't want, and you see in mass production, is this sort of spinning circular um, heater, so same thing, but it's got an opening at either end. And what you're doing is throwing fresh leaves in and it acts sort of like a conveyor belt. It sort of spins the leaves through this heated chamber and comes out the other side. So there's an absolutely no uh, variation. There's no flexibility. It literally is, you know, you throw the leaves in and there's a certain timed area. I guess they can change the angle of the drum slightly, but there's a, a basically it's set via, uh, set time of how long it's going to take for the leaves to spin their way through this heated drum and arrive at the end. And in my opinion, that never produces the right quality because it's not personalized. It's not really looking in the leaves. It's not done by look or feel. It's very, very much a mass produced version of this tea. And I would avoid that at all costs. It tends to, again, produce very weak flavored tea. And so finally, let's talk about elevation. As I said, Huangshan is relatively high elevation area for growing green tea. So you're looking for Huangshan Maofeng around that sort of, I don't know, 500 to 900 meters is sort of a good you know, ballpark range for me. If you see tea which is brought to the market early, another telltale sign if it's been brought to the market early, it may be coming from lower elevation, flat land, low land, plantations, which again is not ideal. So again, the big warning sim uh, signal for me with Huangshan Maofeng is you don't want it to be too early because it may mean the cultivar has been messed with. It will mean that it's been picked too early or it's been picked from lower elevation plantations, sort of very flat land uh, plantations. And it's not just the elevation, but the fact that it's on flatter land. Whereas if you if you go to the plantations for good quality terroir for Huangshan Maofeng, it's steep, it's very rocky, and all of that terroir, the rocks and the, the fast flowing water makes for higher quality tea. So the flatter lands with richer soils is not gonna produce high quality tea, but it will bring it to the market quicker. So you want the elevation to be higher and you've got to watch out for those early teas, right? Let's warm this up. Well, let's take a look at these leaves. So you can see here, the color is a sort of asparagus green, slight sort of mustard tones in here. So it's not green, green, right? Again, I would avoid anything that looks too green on the dry leaf. You want it to look sort of like it's been processed, okay? Um, and the, uh, the shape of these leaves is relatively straight. There you can see some nice fur on the leaves. You want the leaves to be furry. Malfung means furry peak, so you want it to be furry. But again, watch out because you know early spring pickings where it's very very early will have more of that those the trichomes from the bud um, but is not necessarily going to make better tea again it's all a matter of taste these are just some flags for you to be aware of so you can see that it is relatively straight shaped but this is unshaped, so it's not gone through a shaping process, it's not gone through any official shaping process. It's gonna you know, be laid out flat on the, on the drawers for heating, etc. but it doesn't go through an official shaping process. And that is why you get malfungs, which may look very, very different, sort of twisted, gnarly, a little bit, you know, all over the place. So with uh, green teas, as I said, you've got different types of green tea. You've got the, uh, and it depends on the how it's finished. In this case, it's baked with longjing. It's stir fried. The whole process is the, the the is the pan frying process. So it goes through from beginning to end in pan frying. Overall, you know, there's some machinery involved as well. Um, and then you've got steaming. So you get the steamed, and then you've got sun drying, um, which obviously is very famous in Yunnan area. So. This is a baked green tea, okay? There's a lot of baked green teas in Anhui province, and a lot of them share similar characteristics in terms of what is a positive note and a negative note. And I'll say from the outset that the big thing 
that I think a lot of people who try Huangshan Maofeng, sometimes Taiping Hokui, sometimes Anji Bai Cha, so all teas from Anhui province, a lot of the time you will find that the flavor is too weak. And there needs to be a distinction between light flavor and weak flavor. And that's really something that comes from tasting. Right, let's have a sniff of these leaves. So the first thing that really jumps out to me here is the warmth of the smell of these leaves. So I would say one of the things you should avoid is a tea which just smells in a way too fresh. So everything here is about, you don't want a Huangshan Maofeng that tastes or smells or has a character at the beginning which sort of presents itself as being too fresh and green because it will usually mean that the experience is a bit weak, not light, but weak. So the smell of this smells like it's gone through it, an intense process of warming. So that baked smell is coming through. I'm getting things, and it might sound a bit surprising, but I'm getting things like chocolate chip cookies, you know, chocolate shortbreads. I'm getting, yeah, like, 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 yeah, I'm imagining sort of dark chocolate shortbreads, medium chocolate shortbreads, some nuts in there as well, like toasted hazelnuts. It's not as beany and nutty as like a nutty long jing, but it certainly has the character which you would sort of throw into the spectrum of warming rather than bracing. Right, let's give it a quick rinse just so that we can smell the wet leaves. I'm brewing in 85 degree water here. Okay, here we go. Smell of the wet leaves. So that persists. Now I am getting a little bit of those broad beans. Oh, savory. So a quality marker, again, in my opinion, but let's just Take it as red, that everything here is in my opinion, so I don't have to give you that disclaimer every time. Huangshan Maofeng, one of the beautiful things about Huangshan Maofeng is its savory character, a savory warming character. And that's more in the aromaticsness than the taste, but the taste also has that, a brothy note to it. But the smell here, oh, it's so lovely. It makes me hungry. It reminds me of um, those fried broad beans. If you go to a tapas restaurant and you have those fried uh, broad beans as a starter and it's dusted with paprika, so paprika on top of it. Just so addictive. That smell is it, it very, very much a savory smell. It's got some vegetable stock in there as well, but mostly it's this fried broad beans with not smoked, unsmoked paprika powder. Oh, it's so nice. Now there is a little fruity note coming through, but it's very, very light. And I would sort of put it in the sort of very light green melons. So you know how you have your uh, starters of your, maybe you have melon and ham and you've got your fried broad beans. So imagine that, imagine it's, it's like your, your ultimate sort of little tapas uh, aperitif. Okay, here we go. I did not measure the amount of leaf here, but as always with these kinds of teas, more is better. Now there's some controversy about whether or not this should be covered or not. I have done my own test. I don't really see that much of a difference. I don't notice any difference really if you uncover it or cover it. Um, so I just revert back to type and cover it, and we're gonna brew this for a while. Now, the reason for that is because, right, it is uh, bud and, uh, and, and young leaf that has been unshaped. So that means that it hasn't gone through a process where the outer layers are being broken up. When you have pearl-shaped teas, they get broken up. When you roll the tea, you're taking off that outer layer, and therefore you're getting, you know, a much easier, quicker extraction. With these kinds of teas, 
And similar to white teas, they have not gone through a shaping process and therefore they're gonna take time because the leaf and the bud is naturally water resistant. So you, you, you want to sort of overcome that water resistance. So there you go, I think that's about right. Here we go, let's pour this in here. Take a look at the color of that liquor. Now, we are here at this point where some people would maybe say, whoa, that looks very, very, very light. And we need to create the distinction between lightness and delicacy and purity with weakness and a, a, a lacking in intensity, right? And I think that this is one of those things that people struggle with a little bit. This is glistening and you probably can't see it. I have the benefit of the light going through. This has got trichomes central, just like clouds of trichomes, those furry, um, the furry part of the bud just floating, suspended in this liquor. The color of the liquor is a sort of slightly green, yellow, like almost herbal liqueur kind of look to it. It is a lovely color, I have to say. Right, here we go. Let's see what the body is like. Just the look of that gives me a lot of encouragement. Look at that. Lovely, thick texture. Ah, thick, soft. Not oily, it's sort of, it's sort of hard to describe. It's thick to soft to fresh. But the thickness and brothiness is there from the outset. So key flaw here, if you taste Huangshan Maofeng, if it tastes like it, I mean, if the, the texture of it is very thin, again, you're probably, it's more in that big category of Huangshan Maofengs, which I reject on the basis of too weak, right? Because this has a beautiful lightness about it. And teas like Anji Bai Cha, and teas like Ho Kui, they are the teas which, it, they're always a slight struggle to source because you're looking for that certain something, that je ne sais quoi that is hard to put your finger on, but is so revered amongst Chinese green tea lovers. And that is this combination of lightness, elegance, delicacy, and purity with character, depth, complexity, body, and flavor. But for a lot of people who are first getting into green teas, they may, may, because some people go for it immediately, they may find, oh, this is a bit weak and they prefer to go down the line of um, senchas, gyokuros, longjings, other sorts of stronger, initially stronger teas. But even if you compare it with Longjing, the most expensive Longjings have a real lightness of touch and elegance and delicacy that the stronger teas don't. And this is due to processing, it's due to picking, etc. But if you have a, a really high quality version of a Huangshan Maofang, a, a Taiping Ho Kui, or an Anji Bai Cha, there is a certain something that's hard to put your finger on because if you tasted it next to another one which you may think is lower quality, it may have a similar sort of freshness about it. It may have a similar sort of um, uh, delicacy about it, but it just doesn't have a potency within it. It's like one is empty and one is full. It's very hard for me to explain without sitting down with someone and tasting quite a few, but uh, I hope people out there who, who have a passion for these kinds of teas understand what I mean. So let's talk about the taste here. Mm. So this is a combination. You are getting that creaminess and savoriness. Now it's m moved out of the sort of broad bean and beanie note. I mean, it's still there a bit, but it's more in this sort of creamy tarot's, uh, yeah, creamy, yeah, taro um, root. And then you combine that starchy, warm note with the purity of what you would imagine like licking 
fresh dew off you know when you come out of a camping you know you camping you get up early morning you get that 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 intense smell of dewy fresh ionized air right that is in there as well but not winter like summer so you know it's going to be a hot day it's a sizzling day in london today so it's one of those this morning if we were out camping just that that beautiful summer morning early morning dewy aroma and taste combine that with this sort of warming starchy taro and then afterwards this fresh cooling slightly lemony finish and that as always with tea the finish tells you so much information do not ignore the finish the finish is, is really, especially with these kinds of teas, is going to be the definer of, you know, taking teas that incrementally maybe in the tasting, in the initial tasting, as you sort of, you know, do your first cursory tasting, increment, you may notice just incremental differences, but in the finish, you will notice a bigger difference. And the finish here. Well, it's difficult for me to explain because when you go to China, oftentimes you say, well, what's important is the finish. And when you ask people, well, what's a good finish for you? And instead of them talking about long and taste and aromatics, they just say it makes you feel comfortable. And this is a tea which just epitomizes that. And good, high quality, delicate, elegant green teas will have this feeling on it especially on a warm day like this that it just gives you a feeling of comfort not warming cozy comfort like a freshness like you know that feeling like you've just stepped out of a shower right that feeling that fresh showered feeling that feeling encapsulated as a sort of finish is what you're looking for in these teas. And that is that je ne sais quoi that I'm talking about. You may not be able to, to sort of describe it or define it in terms of taste or aromatics, but it should be there in terms of its effect. Mm. Mm. Ooh, a little bit of mineral coming through, but it's sweet in its minerality rather than sort of something that's too sort of calcium drying. I'm getting a little bit of like watermelon rind, the green part of the watermelon, but it's very, very light and does not dominate. I, again, I'm not looking for something that is too green like that, because for me, that means that it's not been processed properly, or it's not been processed to the full extent to really usher out the complexity of the flavors that these leaves contain. Mm. Zingy now, starting to get zingy, starting to get fresh, cooling, lemony. Um, sweet, yes, but not as sweet like as, a, as some of those other stronger tasting teas, like a Dragon Well will leave you with much more of a sweet finish or, or even some Angie Bai Chas. If you were going to compare this to Angie Bai Cha, which is something that I think a lot of people would do considering the sort of look of these leaves and the fact that it's from the same province. Angie Bai Cha, for me, is sweeter and fresher. Huangshan Maofeng should be more savory, moving to, to sort of warming, starchy notes with more body in it. And um, the finish should be fresh and juicy rather than very sweet and nothing wrong. I mean, if, there is sweetness, but it's just not as much as with a, a high quality Angie Bai Cha. High quality Huangshan Mafangs have a different personality. Right, let's smell the empty cup. Mm. And this is one of those teas that you just 
can keep sipping, just keep infusing and you can forget this brew. You can brew this grandpa style. If you don't know what I mean, I'll stick a link in the description below. So basically never um, stopping it from being covered with water, just always just topping up. This is a perfect tea for glass brewing, grandpa style. All right, let's have a sniff of this empty cup. I might do the empty Gong Dao Bay as well. Right, sweet. Oh yeah, okay, so I'm getting sugar sweetness like meringues, but um, very, very, um, un, let's say, unposh meringues, right? So they're, they're, there's nothing added, it's just a sugar meringue, one of those ones that just breaks up like powdery sort of sugar meringues, but then with a jammy apricot jam, and there is a nuttiness there, like hazelnuts. It's more like fresh, it's lighter, like either fresh hazelnuts or fresh almonds. Definitely apricot jam, that's surprising. One more infusion, I'm just gonna leave this now to brew and then we'll take a look at these leaves. So the reason why we have not purchased Huangshan Maofang for many years, I think the last time we purchased it was like 2017, is because there is a lot of it on the market that looks the part, that has good credentials to it, let's say, that costs a lot, um, that comes from the right terroir, um, usually earlier picked, and I'm sort of, you know, that's my one of my telltale signs here, as I said, but has all the right look and all the right information on the dry leaf, but when you brew it, just like Taiping Hokwe and oftentimes like Angie Bai Cha, it's lacking something. And sometimes it's hard for you to put your finger on what it is. But all I can say is, I'm talking about the contrast between light, delicate, elegant, and pure, which are all positives. Contrast that with weak and empty. And oftentimes what you get are teas which, which have lightness and delicacy, but also have weakness and emptiness. And what do I mean by that? I mean that they're lacking character, they're lacking body, they're lacking aromatics, although the aromatics and the flavor profile is almost sort of like third in line. It's more about the body and the feel of the tea, the character of the tea, how it makes you feel, it's empty. It feels empty, it tastes empty. It, it has just an empty character to it. But when you find teas which have lightness, delicacy, elegance, and purity, but with that have body, with that have a fullness of character and a sensation afterwards of really feeling good, then, that is a higher quality tea, and that is worth the price, in my opinion, for these premium teas. And oftentimes, you may find, as you, as you move in your journey through green teas, with Chinese green teas, that you start to taste teas and they taste a little bit weak to you. But try to discern the difference between weakness and lightness, um, and with high, high quality Chinese green teas of this ilk, it is all about that, that balance of trying to achieve a very pure, light, delicate liquor that is rich in character and has a personality to it that is undeniable. Right, taste this. <sighs> oh, yeah. I'm gonna grandpa brew this afterwards. I'm just gonna put this in a glass and keep brewing it with water. Similar flavor profiles the creaminess of that taro mixed with the freshness of that morning air. Now it's a little bit sweeter. Now I'm getting a little bit more simple sugar syrup there as well. It's just a delight in its purity and it still has complexity in that purity. Take a look at these leaves. Now these leaves are a, a lot greener, sort of a, a very vi vibrant, bright lime and some olive green. Um, let's take a look at the quality of the pickings here. So you can see a bud and one leaf and you can see that leaf is not 
a little short leaf. It's, you know, extended. It's, it's, it's an extended leaf. All of these leaves you can see are relatively, they're still young, of course, they're still young leaves, but they have some length to them. They're almost the same length as the bud. So we are having a bud and one leaf picking overall here. So you hear, here's just bud and you'll see some ones maybe with two leaves. Overall, you're getting a bud and one leaf, but the leaves have been allowed to develop. They are not just early, early picking, which I think would make for a worse tea. It's important to note that the picking protocols of these teas is really, uh, you know, it's, it should not be seen as something which is any kind of dogmatic way that it has to be this picking versus another picking. It really depends on the tea plant and the picker. Right. So, Huang Shan Mao Feng, the flaws you need to look out for are the most common for me is weakness and emptiness versus lightness, delicacy, purity, and its own character. Also, you want to look out for the classic, so any smoked aroma, you, I would say, is generally considered a flaw. Again, up to you if you like smoky tea, but it usually means that the wood firing process was done in a little bit. Um, got a little bit out of hand and smoke started to either go into the leaf or the leaves during the baking process fell into the charcoal ash and started to create its own smoke. Uh, I also think you should be looking out for teas which are excessively green. Um, I would certainly look for teas which are more warming in terms of their aromatics and savoury savory and warmth that's what i would be sort of the, the characteristic that i would be looking for especially when you're sniffing those dry leaves the body sensation on this as i said leaves me feeling very comfortable very fresh but not fresh like cooling fresh just sort of like i feel like i feel warm but not cozy if you know what i mean i feel like warm and fresh, just like walking out of a hot shower and you just dry yourself down. That feeling, that's the feeling that I'm looking for with Huang Shan Mao Feng and lots of these kinds of green teas. I hope that this gives you information so that you can make better buying decisions. This one is available in small batch online if you want to give it a taste. That's it, tea heads. Check out our other videos, taste our teas wherever you are in the world by browsing mayleaf.com and come visit us if you're ever in London. Other than that, I'm Don from Mayleaf. Thank you for being a part of the revelation of true tea. Stay away from the tea bags, keep drinking the good stuff and spread the word because nobody deserves bad tea. Bye.